first off, we need a little fuel. I got my transfer tank uh, on a pallet so I can take it in and out of the truck when I don't need it. And I don't need it right now, so I just hook the side-by-side -side to it and get some fuel or some power. Uh, today, I'm going to reseed the cow pasture. I've been so darn busy, I missed out on my chance to rent the, uh, the grain drill, or the seed drill, whatever you want to call it. So, I'm going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. It works, but it's like a three-step process and takes a while, but... Uh, let's see, is that about fuel, full of fuel? Close enough, it doesn't have a auto cut off. It's got more in it than it did. So, what we're going to do today is reseed the pasture. Um, how I'll be doing this, what I did last year, it worked phenomenal, but I procrastinated and now it's all booked up. There's a, the tractor place down the road has a grain drill they'll rent for like a hundred bucks a day and you can seed whatever you want to in a day. And uh, uh, I've just been so darn busy. It slipped my mind and now it's all booked up and it's the perfect time now to reseed. So what I'm going to do today is take the finished mower off the tractor. I've got a landscape rake over here. I'm just trying to get out a, just a, a good rye grass for the winter since all the grass has turned brown now. Uh, they're just feeding them hay for supplement right now. But what I'm going to do is I got a landscape rake. I'm going to put that behind the tractor. I'm going to run around in there and drag it and it'll cut about probably a little half inch grooves in the ground. We've gotten a little bit of rain and that'll give that seed a, a little bed to lay in versus just broadcasting it. I need like a, a plugger that'll plug it and then the seed will go down in it. But what I'm going to do is put take this off, put the uh, rake on, rake, come back, take that off, put the broadcast seeder on, run around and seed everything. And I'll kind of see what it looks like. Uh, usually that works, but I have a, a drag that a buddy of mine made me out of one of the old Yanmar tracks. And it works really good. I may just run over it and drag it so that it puts just a little bit of dirt over those grooves and there stands a better chance of uh, sprouting, germinating, plus the birds won't eat it and everything. So pretty much what that is is excavator track cut in half and I gave him everything and he just put some bolts in and bolted it all together. The only problem is you almost need a tractor to drag it because it weighs like I don't know what that track weighs, probably six, seven hundred pounds. It's heavy. The side by side will barely pull it. And it's got to be in like four wheel drive. So it'd probably work with just one, but I got two. I'll hook it behind the tractor or whatever, run around and drag it. So it'll at least be a two step process, possibly a third. So I'm going to get the cows moved up here and go ahead and put the rake on and get started in the back and just work my way up. So long story short, I took the quick hitch thing off here because I accidentally bent the, uh, the mower one day. I backed into a tree. I just barely bumped it, but it screwed all this up. And it was actually harder with these bent back to get it to line up than it is with just this right here. So I took that off and um, hopefully this winter I'll get time to get these straightened back up. I've tried bending them with the excavator. They bend back, but then the darn thing, as you use it, it just bends back. I guess I need to weld a gusset in there or something right here so that it can't keep bending back. A lot of projects to do, just not enough time. So let's go grab the rake real quick, get it put on here.
All right. Got the rake on now. Now I'm uh, ready to go scratch the field up. Let's go. So the best type of fence is one you can cut off with a remote control. From anywhere. As long as I push the button. And it's off. No juice. Best electric fence remote ever. So, let me move this over here. What I'm going to do now that the fence is off, there's a temporary fence in here to keep them separated. I'm going to corral them all over here so I can work back in the back. So what I'll do is just get in here and pull up the temporary fence and just kind of walk them back. Back around. Had another little calf while I was gone. She'll come after you, so I'm not going to go over there and see her. She's a first-time mother, and she's uh, she's very protective of the little one. They're getting more and more friendly. She wants nothing to do with people. So, all right, I'm going to come down here and untie this and walk the uh, fence back around. Come on. Follow the string around. Good cows. Really, I need two hands to do this. As long as I keep it tight, they won't jump over it. Good cows. We just need to go about another 100 feet past the gate. Come on. Come on. Come on. And then just kind of wrap this around the fence to hold it tight for right now. That didn't work too well. I can't tie it with a uh, one hand. Be right back. All right, let's go back a little farther. Hey, girl. Hey. Boop. All right, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Y'all want nothing to do with getting farther away, do you? Hey, hello. That's a, I had a little bull calf. He's a little boy. Mama's pissed. Mama's pissed. All right, come on. Come on. They know that string. All right, let's not run through the string. Good cows. All right, I'm up. Oh, well, she can go under it anyways. All right, let me wrangle them up a little bit more. All right, cows are contained. Now they can come in here and work. They've been eating the machete hay pretty good. Actually, once you get into the inside of it, it's actually pretty good. It's not too bad at all. It'll work for now. They're eating it. That's all that matters. So I'm a little leery on this rake. I don't know how well this is going to work with the broom straw grass that's out there. I'm thinking that it might kind of bunch up. So I pretty much just, I've sacrificed this part. You know, this is where they always hang out. They always have access to the water in the corral. So this area right here is probably never going to really grow grass, but I'd like for everything else to be a pretty decent pasture. And I got to work on enclosing the house before the winter. So I think the rake's going to work pretty good out here. I don't know how it's going to do back there where that tall grass is. It's probably going to clod up. I don't want to mow it because then it will. It'll just rake all that grass up and make a mess. So we'll find out here shortly how well this is going to work. We've just had just a horribly dry summer. It didn't rain for like two months and it just, this pasture took a toll. It took a toll on this pasture. But now that it's starting to rain and cool off, we'll see if I can bring it back to life. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if this is gonna work or make a mess. Oh, well, that's gonna be perfect. I'm just looking for a half inch, three quarter inch little, little scratch. Yeah, 
that's going to be good. As long as it doesn't keep breaking off. This rake has got every other pine taken out of it. So as long as it looks like it stays this, this grass, it should be all right. It'll just give that seed a little bedding to, to bed into. And it'll stand a lot better chance on coming up. Well, this is only going to take about an hour. I wish I didn't procrastinate on that drill. I could have uh, done all this in probably 30, 45 minutes. Now I've messed around and I'm going to have a half a day in it. But such is life, such is life. I, I do believe I can put this thing in high range though. It's not, uh, it's not that critical. It might actually uh, out of the rake a little better. Yeah, that broke it up. Yeah. See what it does down here, because there's a lot of a lot of taller grass. So it's just kind of raking it out. But it's still breaking it up, so that's a good sign. So far, so good. We won't never get anything to grow under these oak trees. All right, well, I'm gonna keep dragging away. So I was trying to beat the sun down. I still probably got an hour and a half before it gets dark. It was 3 when I started and it's 3.30 now. So I'm pleasantly pleased with it. It took me a little over, about right at 30 minutes to do this whole pasture, which is around almost four acres, I think. But uh, the poor tractor might have got airborne a couple times. I was giving it no mercy. But I'm happy with it. It scratched it up nice, so that seed should have a nice little bed to to lay in. I'm going to go take that off and put the cedar on, get my grass seed ready. Um, I'm still debating if I need to drag it or not. I was going to come in here with the bush hog and mow all this down after I seed it and that would kind of make a straw bed for it. But I'm also afraid that it's going to suck all the grass seed up and throw it into a row. Um, I may do a spot and run the bush hog over it and then just get out and look at it and see what it, what it looks like. But I might be able to cut that low 
with a, I don't know. I'll test the spot and see. If not, I'll, I'll drag it and then mow it. I'm just trying to cut my steps down. But, you just gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. All right, I got the pins in. Now we can get this bad boy centered up. About right there. There, that'll work. Get this one put in. Back and forth. Like so, that needs to be tilted just a little bit. Extend that out. That way, when it's up, it's level. I'll run it about right there. You want your drive shaft as even as possible. I'll just spin that around. Put that right there. And then twirl this around. And what this will do is lock that in place so that it can't move. Because if not, as the tractor's moving, it'll bounce around and It'll either tighten up or loosen up, and next thing you know, it's all out of adjustment. Everything's all, all out of whack. So that'll hold that in place. Good to go. Let's go get some grass seed. All right, got 100 pounds of ryegrass, and I had about a, I don't know, eight pounds of clover left. So I mix that in there with it. And get a little clover mixed in with it. The cows really like clover. So I'm going to go put this out and I got another 50 pounds and I'll have to get some more next week if that's not enough. We'll see. Spread a little more grass seed out. Got our PTO on. About right there and go for it. Here we go. That'll be the test spot. See how well it did. 
I didn't scratch this one little spot right here. I'm gonna actually turn the cows over into that area. For probably a, let him stay there for a week or so. Maybe it'll give this time to get germinated. I don't know. Let's see how the weather is. What the weather does, I should say. I need to open that up just a touch a bit more. There we go. It's really putting it out now. And now we got a holly mortal ass. Because I opened it up really good. But we're getting a good broadcast. So it looks like what I'm doing is getting a pretty good coverage on everything. I know you can't see it on camera very good, but I can see it in person. I'll, uh, I'll continue on what I'm doing. I'll probably, uh, I still think it'll probably be best if I run that drag over it. I'll probably just do that tomorrow. And, uh, boy, that sun's bad. And just kind of, it'll bed it in a lot better and it'll keep the birds from eating it maybe. Probably need a little bit more than what I have. I'll get some more Monday.